Well, today, in the midst of springtime, we have something of an ending. Today is the last day of Sunday school for yet another year. Over the past year, we have gathered together for roughly 40 Sundays or so to explore the impact of our faith on the rest of our lives. From the younger classes gathering down the hall to the high school class gathering downstairs, the young adult class that meets in the back of the sanctuary, or the adult classes that meet in the library and church office. This has been a year of growth and instruction, and now on this first Sunday of June, the year comes to an end. But in a way, in the midst of new growth and new life in the springtime, there are a lot of things ending. Students are ending another year of academic achievement. Teachers are putting another year to rest. Some people are graduating, putting, another, putting high school or college or graduate school behind them, while other people are facing other endings. While the earth is experiencing seasonal new, new life and regrowth, our culture is experiencing endings. Emily Pepper was a 2012 graduate of New York University, and she wrote this about endings, reflecting on her graduation. She said, what no one tells you about graduating is that it's impossible to say goodbye in both good and terrible ways. I have seen most of my college friends get married, we have vacation together, and sometimes we ended up in the same workplace. We exchange Christmas gifts and see each other regularly, that is the good, but I still have nightmares about the bad. Classic scenes of running late, getting lost, and messing up on a final exam. These dreams so closely mirror my actual memories that my subconscious can differentiate between what is real and what isn't. At least that's my working theory. I am weighing fear against joy, and she finishes up by saying, the scale tips one way and then the other. Commencement is fear and joy. Endings always brought me anxiety when I was a child. As I was growing up, when one year ended, when a month ended, when holidays ended, when things ended, I was often wrought with anxiety. I suffered from post-Christmas blues, post-birthday blues, and post-graduation anxiety. I remember the anxiety I felt when I finished my sixth grade year and had to leave behind the elementary school where I spent seven years of my life. It was an ending and the prospect of putting that part of my life behind me was daunting. The anxiety of endings is a feature of humanity, and the anxiety author, the author, that the author Emily Pepper talked about in her reflection on graduation, the anxiety that is inherent in that dynamic between fear and joy is probably what was going on in the minds of those first century disciples on the day Jesus ascended, the day we hear about in our gospel lesson this morning. Today is Ascension Sunday, the day we remember those narratives talking about Jesus leaving the disciples behind, lifting off like a balloon, floating up and away, just like that Nissan commercial I keep seeing on TV this past week, where a woman is carrying the red balloon and floats away. This is what we hear today without the balloon. Jesus, after sharing final thoughts with his friends, drifts up, up, and away. This story is briefly hinted at in Mark, and not mentioned in Matthew or John at all. But the author of the Gospel of Luke develops the Ascension story a bit, and in the book of Acts, the story is developed even more. Acts says, when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going up, and they were gazing toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? Jesus was gone, and they couldn't believe it. They couldn't put an ending to this time with them and move on. They continued to look to heaven, wondering and waiting, afraid to turn the next corner, afraid to take the next step. In this story of ascension from Acts, the men who asked that question reminded the gathered disciples about Jesus' teachings. They reminded them that Jesus made promises of new things happening, even as the old things are ending. Jesus promised them that the end will not be the end. This is the theme, not only of today's ascension story, but in the, of the, one of the themes of the entirety of the Bible. The Bible is full of endings, but those endings are midwives for new beginnings. 
And as new things are birthed, they happen on the cusp of the old. The Bible mentions new beginnings over and over again about God creating again and again and again. The parables of creation that we find in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 are not the only creation stories in the Bible. It's full of them, all the way to Revelation 22. This ascension gives way to another creation story. But it will not happen if the disciples continue to stand there looking at heaven. There's another ending happening in the other lesson, Jesus, Judy, sorry, Jesus, Judy, the Judy <laughs> this morning, not the J part, right? The lesson from Acts 16. We are in a season of looking at post-resurrection uh, appearances of Jesus and post-resurrection stories of the apostles and disciples that continued Jesus' ministry after he left. Each week in April and May, we examined one of the disciples. We looked at Thomas, we looked at Paul, we looked at Lydia, Peter, Cornelius, and even Tabitha over the past five Sundays. And this week, we're talking a little bit about Silas. Like Tabitha and Lydia, little is actually known about Silas. But unlike Tabitha and Lydia, Silas is mentioned quite a bit. He's prominent in the book of Acts appearing for the first time in Acts 15, and then goes on to be mentioned in four of the epistles. Now, not much is known about Silas, it's true, but what we can talk about is his bravery and his ability to look forward, even in the midst of endings. He is selected as Paul's companion in Acts 15, after Paul uh, is not happy with Mark for having uh, these traits of not uh, wanting to go forward. An argument ensues, resulting in a schism between Barnabas and Mark on one side and Paul on the other. And Paul selects Silas as his companion as they continue their journey. So today we find them in Philippi, stirring up trouble. As they were going with the early Philippian church to pray, they were met by a slave girl, possessed by an evil spirit. The spirit brought her signs of divination, seeing the truth where others only see falsehoods. She calls Paul and Silas out as true harbingers of the good news, for she could see the truth behind the lies of the world. Her message fell on deaf ears, though, and did not suit Paul and Silas's purposes. So they cast the demon out of her, and she leaves, fully healed. This was an end to her possession, but it was also an end to the profit her masters were making, using her for her powers of divination. Her masters couldn't see good in the divine miracle in their midst. They only saw an end to their income. So they drew up charges against Silas and Paul, and after an unscrupulous trial, threw them in jail. This was an end to their mission in Philippi, or so it seemed. But that ending led to a new beginning, as God's miraculous power was revealed in the life of their jailer. Paul and Silas bravely testified to their faith, even in the midst of the most egregious torment the first century world could offer, and their faith kept them strong. God's miraculous power created new opportunities in their midst, and they converted their jailer and his household to the way. The emerging church grew by many that night, and God's, God's power was revealed in amazing ways, all because Paul and Silas we're open to the next big thing, next new thing. So this month is Pride Month. And this year is especially poignant as this year is the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion, the event that was the genesis of the perceived need to recognize those in our society who are marginalized because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. If you don't know the story, on June 28, 1969, a contingent of police de detectives raided the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, New York, bringing undue force and violence on a community that had already been disenfranchised because of their sexual orientation and gender identity. That incident brought to the public the need to stand up for all who are unjustly abused, and the next day protests ensued. June 28 became an annual day of recognition remembering that event, and the focus for Pride events, which later became Pride Month. So that incident, for some, was an ending. Some may have thought their lives were over. Some may have thought they would never emerge from this ending. 
jailed by Paul and Silas and told that they were less than human because of how they were created, it must have been hard for these folks to maintain their faith. But that ending gave birth to a new beginning and led many disenfranchised people to the affirmation that yes, they do matter, and yes, they too are beloved children of God. Faith was restored in many people because of that ending that day, and the new beginnings were the result. In our lives, we are faced with endings all the time. Graduations, retirements, even death. Children grow older and we become empty nesters. Our bodies change physically and we realize that we can't do the same activities that we used to when we were younger or keep up with the pace of our adolescence. Our lives are full of endings, but each ending brings with it a new beginning, even death. This is a story that is being told by today by Paul and Silas as they sing of their faith in an environment not conducive to song. This is the story that is told by the Gospel writer as he contemplates the ascension of Jesus and asks, why do you stand looking up to heaven? And this is the question we must ask ourselves as we navigate the dynamic between fear and joy that Emily Pepper equates to the anxiety of commencement. Fear and joy. This is the anxiety of commencement. This is the anxiety of the ascension. And it's Jesus' gift to you. Life would not be worth living without a bit of fear mixed in with the joy. And the anxiety it brings is the stressor that molds our character. Fear and joy is the gift of this Ascension Sunday. What will these disciples do next? What will you do with that gift? Amen. Okay. There were many post-resurrection visits that Jesus shared with his friends. When he did, he reminded them of the commandments that he shared with